What's up guys, it's Zach from The Rolling Times and today we're pulling the trans out of this Jetta. This is a 02 1.8T manual Jetta. First thing we're gonna do is remove the air box. Next thing you wanna do after you have the air box out is undo your shift cables. There's clips on the end here. You can just pop that tab up and pop the clip off and then the cable will slide off. And then you have a bracket here that's, uh, I believe those are 13 millimeter bolts. There's one, two, three. For the next step, after you undo the shift bracket, you wanna, well at least this is the way I do it, I take the line off for the slave cylinder. I have a little lock on the line here so it doesn't drip fluid everywhere. And then there's a little metal clip that I already lost, so be careful when you take that out that it doesn't fly somewhere and you lose it but you take that clip out there and then you can just pull your line off the slave and tuck that up here out of the way looking under the car the next thing I'm going to do is unbolt the axles you will need a specific triple square tool if these are the factory axle uh, axle bolts so we got six axle bolts on the driver's side and six on the passenger side we will have to remove if you're doing this job by yourself i found the easiest thing to do to keep the axle from spinning when you loosen the bolts is just stick a screwdriver in the slots of the rotors and then that will hold the axle in place while you break these loose all right so now that we have both axles unbolted the next thing i like to do is unplug everything we have, I believe, a speed sensor on the back of the trans above the differential here that we'll need to unplug. Usually if you just push a flathead in there, you can get that thing to pop off. Be careful, they like to break. The next thing is the reverse switch sensor. Um, you wanna unplug that, unplug your starter wires, unbolt this guy, this ground to the starter. Um, we'll also want to remove the brackets for any uh, for like the power steering hose so we have one bolt here and we'll just remove this nut here off the starter I'm not sure if this steps necessary but I like to remove it um, I take the shift tower off it's a 13 millimeter nut and then once you remove that you just pull the tower straight up or the weight straight up and just makes a lot more room when you're trying to get the transmission out we also have another ground wire right here on the transmission. That's a 13 millimeter nut that you'll want to remove. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is finish removing the driver's side axle. There's a 30 millimeter 12 point axle nut that you'll have to remove. And then three bolts or three nuts for the ball joint. And you can slide the steering knuckle out and remove your freaking axle. So I have the axle out, all my ball joint bolts freaking snapped when I was taking the ball joint out, so just be prepared to replace those. Uh, we're getting close to pulling this thing out of here. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the bolts for the transmission mount here. Um, and then I'm going to remove all the bolts, all the bell housing bolts that are up top. So basically just this guy and this guy that the ground was on. I believe those are usually 17s or 18s. They could be 19s, but I think that's all the ones up top here. And then we're going to go under the car, support the engine, and uh, remove our dog bone and the rest of the bell housing bolts, pull the starter out, and we should be able to wiggle this thing out of here. As we're back under the car, the transmission's about ready to come out. We just got to remove our starter, remove our dog bone, and I'm also going to remove the transmission mount off the transmission with these three bolts here just to make it easier to come out. Uh, as you notice here, I have the engine supported because once we take this dog bone mount out, the only, we only have one engine mount holding the engine in. So you definitely want to support the engine. If you're not working on a lift, usually what I do is I put a jack stand with a piece of wood under the oil pan before I remove this uh, trans mount. Just uh, be careful because when you remove that trans mount, the engine will drop. And then if I'm doing it on the ground, I usually try and wiggle out the transmission from the top. But since I have the lift, we're going to do it from the bottom. So we got a couple bell housing bolts to take out then. 
and we should be able to get this thing out of here. We have the starter out and I just wanted to show you this quick because it's hard to see while it's in the car but for the upper bolt there's a 13 millimeter nut that threads onto the stud that holds like a black plastic uh, like holder for all your wires so you want to remove that 13 millimeter it's just if you stick a socket up in there you'll feel it when it's up in the car it's just hard to see while it's up there so I wanted to show you guys and then the starter bolts an 18 millimeter all right so this thing's about ready to come out I just wanted to let you guys know it might be a smart idea to break all your bell housing bolts loose before you uh, undo the mounts because this thing's shaking around like crazy but you do have an 18 millimeter on the back side like on the engine side and then on the trans side you'll have one two three 16 millimeter bolts to take out and then I won't be able to videotape this but a lot of times for these the axle flange will not clear the flywheel so you kind of have to rotate the transmission up and then bring it down if that makes sense guys we got the transmission out just be careful when you're taking it out it does tend to get caught on this power steering line we had to lower the engine a bit to get it around that and then here was our culprit this thing is freaking destroyed while we have the transmission out we're going to replace the flywheel pressure plate and clutch to start taking apart the flywheel you'll need a 6 XZN for the flywheel bolts this is a dual mass flywheel which we're going to get rid of and replace with a single mass flywheel that's what I recommend if you guys are doing a clutch kit on this uh, the dual mass flywheels are really heavy and don't really hold up to much power if you plan on going stage 2 alright so we got the clutch out um, there's definitely some material left on it but it looks like it's got hot it got hot <laughs> crack there's some chunks missing the springs are freaking shot and then to remove this flywheel we're just going to remove those center bolts um, i already loosened them all up it helps if you have an impact for that another suggestion if you guys are doing a clutch kit i definitely recommend replacing the rear main seal make sure you get the whole freaking thing don't just get the seal because it's a pain in the ass to get in and out of there um, get the whole housing and seal it's just a couple bolt, 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight freaking bolts that you take out and then you put the new seal on and then you don't have to worry about it. Cause the last thing you want to do is pull the trans and replace the clutch and then have the freaking rear main seal leak like a month later. Trust me, I've freaking done it. New parts got here. We have our single mass flywheel. We have our pressure plate, we have our throw out bearing, clutch alignment tool, and the new clutch disc. First thing we want to do before we put that stuff on is clean off all the surfaces. Um, right now they have like a rust prevention grease on them, so we want to get those nice and clean. And then we'll start installing, reverse uh, how we took everything apart. Also, if your kit doesn't come with it, you'll want to get new bolts. You don't want to reuse the old ones. I've made that mistake before as well. If you notice here, there's only one correct way to install the flywheel. It won't let you install it any other way, but these two bolts are closer than the rest. Uh, that way everything stays up, stays uh, lined up for your timing marks and stuff on the flywheel. For the flywheel bolts, you want to tighten them um, in a crisscross pattern. And you tighten them to 10 foot-pounds, and then once you tighten them to 10 foot-pounds, you want to go around again in a crisscross pattern and tighten them to 44 foot-pounds plus a 90 degree turn. All right, so this is my solution for locking the flywheel so I can torque it down without it spinning around. The next step is centering the clutch with the clutch alignment tool on your flywheel. And then you'll want to get your pressure plate and line it up. There are three pins on the flywheel and the pressure plate will only align one way on there. And then once you get the pressure plate on there, you're going to install the pressure plate bolts they are a nine millimeter 12 point bolt at least that's what they should be and they're going to get torqued to 15 foot pounds evenly again a crisscross pattern and then once that's done you're going to remove the clutch alignment tool well that's going to wrap up my video guys putting the rest of the stuff back together we were kind of crunched for time so i didn't get a chance to record any of it but the hardest thing is going to be getting the transmission back on there getting that axle flange above the up and around the flywheel and then once you have that 
on there, everything's set, and you get your first bell housing bolt in. The rest of the stuff's really cake if you can get that done. Um, it's just putting the rest of the stuff back together opposite of how you took it apart. You will have to bleed your slave more than likely. Um, that's pretty easy. It's pretty much like bleeding brakes. If you guys don't know how to do that, there's plenty of write-ups and other videos on that. But if you do have any questions about taking the transmission out, taking the clutch out, or reinstalling any of that stuff, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to help you out and answer your questions. Um, if you don't have a 1.8T or you have a 6-speed trans, or um, this this DIY is pretty much going to be the same for any Mark IV and very similar for the other generations of Volkswagens. Um, especially any four-cylinders, the bolts are pretty much all in the same spots and everything. I've done transmissions on Mark IIs, Mark III's, Mark IVs, and Mark Vs. So if you guys have any transmission or clutch questions, let me know in the comments below. And like I said, I will try to help you out the best I can. Thanks for watching, and if this video helped you out, please uh, subscribe.